1942, an almanac. That was the year Arnold gave up on God, the year he was taken to meet our great-grandfather Joseph Salzmann for the first and last time, to be blessed by an old man with a wooden leg, pious and learned and more than ninety, before he was taken and gassed or beaten to death in the streets like the other Jews of Slovakia. That year Arnold celebrated Passover for the last time. He and Grandfather Moritz met in secret, ate in secret, and parted. That year Himmler tested Zyklon B in January at Birkenau's Red Farmhouse and buried the victims in a meadow. At 13, Arnold was already a lover of math. On the one hand, God. On the other, Holocaust. On the one hand, man. On the other, what? And the final solution passed in one C, solved whose equation? By March, Heydrich and his gang have killed 200,000 when Camp Belzac in Poland comes online. The SS pipe in carbon monoxide until they get a proper gas supply and the Jews from Lublin arrive. Given the rules, no wonder you sit at Seder and pray that someone, anyone, had secretly converted or knew a righteous Gentile, one to provide false baptismal papers. That was the rule, convert before 1935 and be safe in Slovakia. When they tell you it isn't about religion, well, it's like a lawyer saying it's not about the money. But Tiso, a Catholic priest and the head of government, revokes even this slender reed, and faith snaps like unleavened bread, too dry for your mouth. That April, you eat your last Passover meal in secret. Three weeks after the trains start to run from Slovakia to Birkenau and the Jews disappear from Parisian streets. The first transports arrive at Maidanek and Sobibor ramps up in May. Riga's too poor and small for camps, so the Germans use moving vans and portable gas. In June, the stars fall out of the sky, turn yellow on lapels in France. In Holland, Belgium and Croatia, Slovakia and Romania, no one speaks out in the darkness. Six days after Heydrich dies of Czech wounds, the Germans in revenge burn Lidice to the ground. Despite everyone's best efforts, Production falls behind, so they open a second chamber in the white farmhouse at Birkenau. The first million die. Americans can read the news and the times, but the president does nothing. Now it's July and a few Berliners are packaged for death. Himmler plans to sterilize the rest, those who are bred by Germans fucking Jews. It's almost Bastille Day when the Dutch are sent to Birkenau and the French, rounded up by the French, leave for Drancy and thence by transport to Oswikem, Maidnek, and Sobibor, where they kill the children first. Himmler himself watches two trainloads of Dutch arrive under his eyes. They're robbed and stripped, shaved and gassed, then burned. A friend of Himmler says later, he would jump into his own grave with gladness, knowing he had killed five million. As a reward, he gets four new ovens at Birkenau and opens Treblinka. No one from Poland will survive the two buildings and ten gas chambers, each one holding 200 people, where his staff works day and night, killing so many with carbon monoxide they must burn the bodies in open pits. It's then the survivors from Warsaw arrive. The graves are filled to overflowing when open pit burnings begin at Birkenau. It's summer's end and the Belgians arrive. In order to save water for drinking, the Germans dig up 100,000 corpses and burn them again. This is the way of the world. Kill a man's faith, then steal his job and take his life then rob his grave.
In September, the SS sends stolen banknotes home from Birkenau and Meidenick, gives watches and clocks and pens to Germany's troops, clothing to soldiers, wives, and children, before boxcars of loot roll on to Berlin and the foreign money and gold and art are placed in Swiss boxes. Outside the fatherland, more help comes. In the Ukraine, killers take pictures. Women from the Mizhoz ghetto stand naked in a ravine, wait to be shot, their infants at the breast. Mass shootings break out in the East. In October, they round up the remnant, trains bringing Norwegians to Birkenau, and the charade at Teretzin ends. By then, almost 200,000 are dead in Bialstok and 600,000 at Belzec. The old factory wears out. It's decommissioned. The gas chambers dismantled. The grounds plowed under and planted, hidden. It's Christmas 1942, when they sterilize the women at Birkenau. But fate wasn't finished with you, my cousin. And at the end of the war, you were right to ask about God. Your mother gassed at 37. Your father shot a few hours short of liberation. You were not the first or last to question. Even that son of Jesse, nailed to a tree, cried out, Eli, Eli, why have you forsaken me? Now, eighty, without wife or child, even you proclaim man's not that bad and neither is God. So why not forgive him yourself, if not him? It's too late for us to argue about this. Tonight, the twice-killed corpses leap from their pits, crying, forgive. That's why I'm writing this. At last, you have the facts. The world is old and unchanging. How much could you know running with my father in the snow? Look at me, please. Lost in your nightmare, I want to know why your slanted heart works so hard to correct me. Why reproach me if I get something wrong, a date or place or number? Those who don't believe already will never believe. Look in my eyes where truth lies like a stolen artifact shining, its arms broken off as the grave robbers say, sporca de terra, dirty with earth. Though I've never slept on a kinder transport, I'm still transported. Even if no death march left Terezin, others were led this way from other camps. If there's no hope for you, there must be for me. One of us must recover and speak to their disbelief. Some subjects are given and must not be returned. I take mine from the grave with clean hands. Look at these bones, dear cousin, beyond ancient, beyond geological time, certain, more precious than silver stolen from Anatolia, more precious than a cultic statue taken from a dig in Sicily or teeth from a pit in a Russian forest. Arrange my spoils as you wish. Place a tripod of bronze at my feet, a shining candelabrum at my head. Grace my brow with Lydian gold, a wreath dirty with earth. But no, no truth is a proof as strong as the lies of poetry. Your memory of that year is mine. I bring you looted treasure, history's twisted snakes.